Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the 5-1 Speedway Show. Uh, hopefully you managed to catch up on all the other ones that we've done in the past, you know, with our last episode being a very good one with uh, David Howe. Uh, gave us a lot of good stories from that one there. This week my guest is an Ipswich Reading legend. You know, he's also a legend on the grass, as well as doing, having many, many caps for England. Uh, and his record of individual honours through the 80s speaks speaks volumes in itself. Please welcome to the show, Jeremy Doncaster. Hello. <laughs> Do <I> clap? <laughs> Do <I> clap? <laughs> clap? Clap if you want to. Cheer, <laughs> holler. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. Yeah, really, really, whoop. really good intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But uh, Hello, how, you keep, how are you keeping, Jim? You all good? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I've worked... Uh, been a key worker, I've sort of worked all the way through the lockdown and this one as well. So, um, same as quite a few people as well. So, um, uh, yeah, keeps me on my toes. Never been so busy to be honest because of the COVID as well. But, but I'm not an NHS worker, I might, I might add. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> take my hat off to those as well, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Take my hat off them. And uh, if there's any NHS workers watching, we appreciate all your help and everything you've done in this yeah. weird time and this weird yeah. pandemic. So thumbs up to you guys. Yeah. But uh, moving on, so obviously your 2020 has been disrupted, no speedway this year. So what have you managed to do to keep yourself sane and busy, shall we say? Then apart from working. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I've got electric push bike actually, which um, keeps me entertain and that's all the way through september i cycled to work which is a 20 mile 20 mile round trip but and it's a mount, electric mountain bike so um oh. yeah going across the field, field well i know people say it's cheating but <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you do get a little you do get a little bit of a sweat or not much but mm. but um there's, there's a few of us when we can go as a group you know there's Three or four of us who get who's, who's got them, and they're they're great fun. They really are. No attempts to try and get it sideways at all in the field when nobody's looking. Uh, we get the usual dares and step offs, and <laughs> you know, and it, it sort of, and it's has to be you, Jim. You know, <laughs> a, sort of in, a, in a ditch somewhere. You know, sort of. So it does happen still. So the the um, <clears throat> the red mist comes over every now and again. The racer in you comes out again. <laughs> That's right, yeah. The stupidity as well. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that. I won't go that far, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but, uh, well, the reason you're here is to talk about uh, your long and illustrious career. Um, so, basically, the opening question is, how did you get into Speedway? Did you follow it from a young age and then just weaned your way into riding a bike? Um, I think how it starts, yeah. Well, well I... Uh, for me, it started from the schoolboy era for the North and Suffolk um, Junior Motorcycle Club. And I lived next door to um, somebody who owned a motorbike shop, Peter Davey. And I, I was a, a Saturday boy as well. And I uh, used to clean clean the motorcycles. And uh, he he really, well, the family actually took, took me under their wing. And um, after getting complaints from the neighbours, um, <laughs> right in the top of the garden on a on a moped with a with a baffles taken out of the silencer. Um, yeah, <laughs> they, they, yeah. They probably know the score. Yeah. And, uh, they um they said, oh, they're just opening up a new club. Oh, you know, that's something that um Jem could be interested in. So um mm. so we joined up. In actual fact, the the the, the the moped I got riding around the top garden was probably we call him Alec the Jack, Alec Gooch. Oh yeah, I know, I know him. Yep. Yeah, I bought it off him. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but I've got I've got a picture somewhere. It was wasn't a lot of money. It might have been about four pound fifty or five pound or something like that. But <laughs> that was the start of it. So you can blame him really. And no. fortunately, um, we went round left. You know, we went there yeah. sort of clockwise, which is quite good. But but my brother actually, Nick, he's, he 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 was actually faster going clockwise. So <laughs> okay, bit <laughs> of a sidecar driver then, really. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, 
yeah, so that evolved from there, really, and then we went to um, join the Northern and Suffolk. And I think, really, that, that starts up as something that um, you you enjoy as a hobby, and then uh, as it, it evolves as it goes on, and then you realise it carries on as a hobby through schoolboy, and then um, then you realise that, you know, when you, when you start winning some meetings and there's prize money, you think, well, hang about, that's... Um, more than what I sort of could earn in a week, mm. and eventually um, the sums work in favour of you. And at the end of it, the sums don't work in favour for you. So, <laughs> so you know when to start. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end of it, you know when to stop because the, the figures just don't add up. Mm. But all along, you start off because you, um, you know, it's in your blood and you enjoy doing it, and that's what drives you on. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also just having the love, love and the passion for it. And obviously, when you start winning and succeeding, that's when the drive and everything keeps going to wanting more, to uh, try and beat faster, better boys, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, that that's absolutely spot on. I mean, that's um, you know, the uh, that's the that's the the bound the the spirit within you. It's driving you on all the time and saying, you know, I want to do this. I want to um, better myself mm. and achieve. <laughs> Achieve good things, great things. Yeah. And win Which all you races, did. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what? true. You won, won, won many races in your career anyway. I know that. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so from those sort of fun times that with buying that bike off Alec and all that sort of thing, how did you get into the – how did you progress then from that? Did you go from like, uh, I don't know, like an 80cc bike to a 250 sort of jump, was it then? Or was it a yeah. bit more of a close approach? Yeah, no. Um, I think I started on a Suzuki 80. Mm. And then um, I borrowed a, um, a, a Suzuki A100, which I couldn't actually touch the ground. You know, it's um, Kirk converted and, and managed to get the first trophy, which actually was um, at the Alf Hagen sponsored me in, actually. Ah. So, yeah, the Al, Alf Hagen trophy I've got. Which is, mm. the, one of my proud, proudest trophies, actually, tiny little thing it was, but it's the first one. <laughs> yeah. Proudest one. So, um, yeah. And, and yeah, through through the ages, I suppose it went to, oh, 125 Honda, road converted, road one, just sort of a lot of extended swing and arm. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, then, a, then a Hagen, uh, like the miniature sand racer. Oh, yes, yep. <laughs> And then I think I ended up on a, um, I think there's a Bull Tarko. It's Paul Davies, Pete, Pete, Pete Davies' son, he's Bull Tarko. That was kind of a, he, he was doing senior grass track and he said, well, you can ride this in the junior ones if you want. Mm. He, he, he was going to do trials. Oh, so, okay. um, so, you know, so I did finish the school wheel on that and I actually started senior grass track on that one. And then, um, Realised it wasn't really, wasn't the best handling thing in the world. I, I can't remember what, it wasn't a Hagen, that was a, I don't know what it was, to be honest. We never really mm. did find out. It might have been a, um, had a big old thick round down tube, mm. but it's very rigid. And, but, um, and Pete sort of said, well, let's, you know, the, um, you know, get, get, you know, the shop, the, the shop I worked for, they, they yeah. actually sponsored the bike and then, a 250 and then later on a, a, a 500 and then it was a Honda shop as well and then um, uh, so I think I fi- finished runner up on the on the Mako 250 Mako and then the next next year Honda UK um, sponsors on a 250 Honda which I won the British Championship on at yeah. the same time also went uh, rode the jeweled up in the 500 class as well on a on a 500 Jack mm. and that's when um, uh, everyone was probably just got rid of all their jacks and we're all on <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. I can imagine riding an old an old jack was a, a bit of a, an interesting experience, shall we say? Well, in actual fact, when I got me Wesley, um, after that, a couple of years after that, um, uh, the, shop, the shop said, okay, you know, buy Wesley. I was a bit disappointed when I first rode it. I thought <laughs> it didn't feel as good as me jack, you know, so... Um, but I think the stuff coming out of the out of the, the factory then was um, you know you had to you had to sort of 
I think it was described as they couldn't, couldn't, they didn't have enough packaging to pack things up for parts of people to assemble them. So they just assembled them to save on the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, anything yeah. you can save on is good, isn't it? So, yeah, so there wasn't a lot of blueprinting going on and mm. things weren't that <laughs> round and <laughs> straight. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then, yeah, and with that, I think really that's on the grass tracks. You know, five hundred. So I made made a bit of a name. You know, in um, well, drew the attention really, I suppose, in the motorcycle canoes on the mm-hmm. on the lightweight class, which then followed on uh, to the to the five, you know, to the five hundred cc class. So that, yeah, that s- similar sort of time when I, I suppose Trevor Banks and and Wiggy, you know, mate Wiggy. Yeah, good old Wiggy. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, we're all um, battling after the same things, and it's very competitive for grass tracks, you mm. know. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, and, and I, I actually went to actually Martin and Martin Hagen as well. Yeah. Actually, Martin um, phoned us up one day and he said, "Do you fancy going to the Isle of Man?" You know, um, um, Brigo Barry Breeze was in the shop, and he said there. Um, you know, he, he he asked Martin to go and said mm. that you know Martin asked him. He said, "Well, could I bring bring a mate along to save on the travel?" <laughs> yeah. I think we weren't, you know, because it was a bit um, bit tight, you know, a bit bit close, you know, to do it. So yeah, and, um, well, <laughs> so I went along, doubled up with Martin, and we just about paid for the ferry, I think, and the and the fuel, and. Uh, and that's quite a good lineup, actually. And I think um, I think there's PC and Ivan Major and um, the, the, the Wig, you know. The, yep, and, the wig. Uh, yeah. and I'm not sure if um, PC maybe Pennel were there, but I'm not sure if their bikes turned up. I can't, I can't really remember now. But <laughs> but but anyway, I, I made one of those um, made I scraped in at the final, and um, just sort of made one of those starts, you know, and just yeah. Um, and, and, and managed to win it. So, and that, um, and the, the Davy Rubber shop's so chuffed because that was a uh, centre page of the motorcycle news. You know, so yeah, getting, getting good publicity yeah. straight away then, basically. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Because yeah. after that, um, you know, there's, there's uh, Martin Rogers used to ring us up more or less weekly. In actual fact, Martin, I think he was. I'm not. I think he's just a journalist. Then I think he he he. I don't think he was managing Kings Lynn, mm. although later be, became Kings Lynn manager. But um, obviously took a keen interest and um, I, can't, I kind of went um, did a second half for him when he's at um, no, it was, where was it? Leicester actually. He, yeah, he we was, were Leicester. Yeah, Leicester. Yeah. And uh, did a second half for him up there, and mm. and uh, after a couple of seconds, I, I didn't really like it to be honest. To be well, that's just, <laughs> and I said, no, nah, you, you know, I'll give that one a miss, and yeah. just left it for, for for a season really, or a year, and then um, Martin decided, Martin Hagen decided to have a go at Speedway, and and I went to watch Martin to do the the Hackney Juniors, and mm. and. Uh, he said, "Well, bring your levers. So you can have a go on my bike." And and then, of course, that was it. Then I just had a go, and then John Berry was there. on the phone. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, that is you know, God, Godfather approach and say you've got a run. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, I can imagine when John Berry rings you up, it's a uh, case of, "Okay, yes, I'll do that. Yes, yes, sort of, sort of, <laughs> sort of thing." That have a, that sort of argue with him, you know. But that's uh, but no. That's- but no, it it's, it's good, good to, to hear anyway. Yeah, it took him a little while to convince us. And um, because the only, the only person I had to, who knew well enough to sort of advice was um, John Louis. So I used to ring up John Boy and say, um, you know, what sort of, uh, you know, what shall I ask for? What, you know, give me a bit of advice. And he said, no, 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 you know, no, no, you know. A little bit more, a little bit of waiting, <laughs> keep him waiting a bit longer. So, and that was great until I actually wrote, rode for John. Yeah. And he was a promoter and he sort of said that. And in actual fact, 
And he said, I've taught you too well to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we all um, agreed, you know, good, uh, fair, fair terms. We, we mm. were always, you know, fair, uh, together. We always, yeah. um, you know, found, found a happy medium, which was good, good to deal with. Mm. Great fun. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, Reading as well. Same with yeah. Reading as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll come on to Reading. Don't worry, we won't miss Reading yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you you joined Ipswich in what was it eighty two? You joined, wasn't it? When yeah, uh, you had we had yeah. Dennis Segal or some people like that in the team. Um, and I mean that that must have been a, a big eye opener for yourself in such an early stage in your own career. Well, it was. I mean, the the good thing the good thing was that they all. Um, they, it's my first sort of um, experience of a, of a of a team and and how how it how the importance was to make it gel and how that if you you know if you need advice there's always someone there to ask and um, it, it it was great you know sort of really like the whole team thing and 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 what helped it as well uh, was that we more or less lived down one street. You know, um, from from my parents' house, uh, where where my workshop was and where I was living at the time, and mm-hmm. all the way to Bucklesham Village, was virtually the whole team. So we all <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. So and in between it was um, golf courses and then the Heath. You know, there's obviously the Foxhall Heath. And yeah, Foxhall. Yeah. Sainsbury's is as well. So I mean, it was like as soon as all the bikes were washed, it was like a playground. You know, so <laughs> you know, one then would start from one end and say, right, okay, what should we do now? You know, and uh, obviously to keep fit and keep in shape. Although nowadays, you know, they, they've got uh, diet. Mm. You know, um, they have got their diet dietitians and sort of, you know, they got an, an, and a personal trainer. We were just naturally just on whatever we could do physically mm-hmm. possible we had so much bundles of nervous energy and and <laughs> we just naturally were, were were fit because we'd either on push bikes or or playing you know playing golf or just doing anything we or skateboards anything anything we could sort mm-hmm. of like ride we'd have a go at you know yeah, and I mean it's, yeah, well, it's yeah. good for the good for the old team spirit as well. If you all manage to gel and things like that, and you live so close together, like you said, you know, I can imagine that the team spirit in that first year for yourself was amazing. You know, all the personalities you had in that team, and and also they respected what I did grass track was as well because um, ah yeah, you know they they, uh, they they you know when I when I first went to Halifax, I thought you know I didn't really I was. I was terrified, but you know, before I even got there, because mm. I think it was, I think I travelled up with Kevin John. He said, "Oh, you never seen banking like it." He said, "That's at least four foot," and he, and he said, "Oh, it's horrendous when you go out there." And I thought, "What on earth does this place look like?" And when I saw it, I said, "That's not banking." I said, "Have you ever been to Stats Canal in in Holland?" <laughs> That's banking. That's double the size of this place. And took duck the water, you know, and got mm. double figures or, you know, or first visit, sort of really, really, really loved it. And uh, so, the, yeah, not worried at all. Yeah, and I can imagine that no sort of track, to, track in those first couple of years of uh, riding for it, which really phased you. Because like you said, you're used to doing the grass track, the long track, bit, maybe even a bit of sand track and things like that, you know, so you're, you're used to mm. it all pretty much. I was, but I, I did struggle with the confined spaces and the, the, you know, being so close. I mean, grass tracks, you, you can, you've got so much room for error, you mm-hmm. know, and, yeah, uh, true. and you've got ropes that when you run a confined space to the speedway track and uh, you've, you had, I, had, I soon had to be very precise and, and um, think out of the box, you know, otherwise mm-hmm. I wasn't going to last a season. I'd sort of like, I spent, I think the first month, Berkshire, Alf Hagen's, <laughs> uh, you stay in the night he'd say he, I'd give him a ring and you stay in the night I said yeah please bent your bike yeah okay we'll straight that out in the morning and that's <laughs> so that's what it was like but um, I soon learnt by the end of, end of the 82 season that um, and, I, and I, I think I managed to get a first maximum that year mm. right at the end of the year 
but ended up with a broken ankle. But that's part part of the learning curve. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate to end on an injury, but then it probably would make you more keener to come back and improve for the following season. You know, sit on the sidelines and then you can get that little bit of time to think and think, well, I made this mistake here, made that mistake there. And it obviously helps your, your career progress slowly um, through those early years of the 80s and things like that. Well, it did, yeah. And and um, obviously, I, you know, the, the team was moving along fast and I think, 1984, uh, we, we, uh, we won the league. So that, yep. uh, uh, when, well, Cookie, I think Siggy had left us then. And, and, um, and also that's, uh, yeah, no, it's good. That's, yeah. you know, winning that league was absolutely terrific. Yeah, because didn't you do, wasn't it a league and cup double that year in 84? Was that a double year for you, Ipswich? Well, yeah, it's, it, yeah, I can remember doing the, um, uh, we, I, I think we. I, I can't. Remember, I think we. I think we won the league at Reading. I think. Oh yeah. And but I, I'm not sure if we'd already won the cup. I don't. I can't really remember to be honest. <laughs> well, I haven't got dates here, so I can't really say <laughs> much. <laughs> no, you have to look at the dates. But I can remember going, we, we had to go to Bellevue, and and no no one wins at Bellevue. They they just don't win at Bellevue, and um. And uh, for the first leg of the knockout cup, and I, I would say probably we'd already won the league, you know, at, at Reading. So we're on a, you know, a, a pretty, pretty, we were on a high. So um, we went to Bellevue, it's unheard of. Because I was actually staying with Simo at the time, I went with Simmons. Yeah. And um, just for, for, the, for the day for a stopover. And I think I pick, picked up, you know, some wheels and his building for me and bits and pieces. and. And um, he said, "Oh, you'll, you know, you'd do well if you, you know, get some points up there, you know, as a, a team." And Ipswich have always struggled, and Bellevue have always given anyone hiding up there. And we actually went, we actually won up there, which is, um, you know, and uh, which is incredible. And uh, and the Sunday, the, the return. This is a Saturday night, and the Sunday and the return. Uh, at Foxhall, I've never seen so many people in the stadiums absolutely packed. It was full, and, and I thought, oh, I like this. This is what it's all about, you know. Yeah, yeah and and to lift yeah. the lift the cup in front of your home fans as well. I mean, yes, it, it, was, it, yeah. it must have been an amazing feeling because uh, wasn't it? I think you had, uh, say, so you had Cookie. You had, um, I think it was Bob well, Billy Sanders was in your team. Billy, that year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Kai Neme maybe been in your team, maybe something like that. I think it was Nigel Flatman. And people like yeah, that were in the team. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Nigel flat out. Yeah, he went. Yeah. <laughs> um, who else was it? Was it Preben? Was Preben in it? Uh, I think he might. I no, think Preben might have been. He, I think Preben had gone to uh, Wolverhampton, didn't he? So it's oh, okay, good. yeah, yeah. Uh, I know it's Kai. Um, might have been Robbie Fuller actually. Mm -hmm. Might have been. I think Robbie yeah. was. Yeah, but. Um, Definitely Cookie Billy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, right. good. that's good. Yeah. yeah, good, good little solid unit you must have had there that year, then just to sort of take the board, really. I mean, like you say, a, a surprise win at Bellevue, you know, and Ipswich and Bellevue, or well, the old Bellevue Hyde Road, it's like chalk and cheese, really, isn't it? It's, you've got the tiny tiddly track of Ipswich and the huge banking of Hyde Road. I mean, you couldn't get any different than that. Well, I used to watch. How how I learned to ride it was I I um I used to watch um Peter Collins round there yeah and and uh, and because he 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 could pull off some terrific moves I mean um and 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 yeah I just used to watch every race of, and I saw some of the moves I was like right I I'll, I'll have a go at that you know and <laughs> um and we had some over the over the years there before um I think it closed down in eighty. Six, I think. Yeah, I think it was 86, 87, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And oh, we had some terrific races around there where we pass, repass, and because you could actually um, make straight lines in the middle of the corner, mm. and, um, which even now when I watch the uh, some of the Grand Prix and the riders on the Grand Prix on the big tracks, they still don't ride them like they should ride the old high road where. You know, you can sort of dive bomb people, but not actually knock them off. If you if you did that on a small track, you put them out of the stadium. 
but <laughs> on a big, big track, you, you could make these straight lines. When Golub used to do it at Vidgot, yeah, and yeah. um, and on the big tracks, and he, he if anyone sort of want a lesson how to ride a big track, how to pass people on big tracks and make speed, uh, you've got to watch Golub really because that's how PC and the likes, you know, mm. that, that's how how a big track should be rid, ridden. You know, with with the making the long straights and try to make, make the straights in the corner. Crumpy can do it as well, you know. But, yeah. But there's not many who actually you analyse and think, well, that was a, you know, made a big mistake. Mm. You, you know, you didn't leave big holes in the corners, going into the corners. And it's a kind of Bellevue that the old hide it, it, it's It's probably, sometimes it's better to be, be behind than it was in front. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that before, you know, and a lot of the boys say about the same, the new Bellevue now, um, which is obviously the closest thing that us modern generation are ever going to get to Hyde Road. They say that the best thing to do is miss the start because then you can find a way past people because if you're out in yeah. front, you're like, you're like trying to ride here, there and everywhere. And I mean, you yeah. look at some of the, the, the races from like the, the previous British finals, you know, guys trying different crazy lines and, and things like that, um, just to try and get past people. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. It's great to see. I mean, that, that, that you know, from 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 well, from from oh, no, they tried to base it on the old, well, a bit of both, a bit of um, touring, wasn't it? Touring and yeah, then, a bit of touring, a bit of high road, yeah, and a bit of high road, yeah. But um, yeah, I've seen them make make some um, some good moves around there, you know. But yeah, no, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. good. Some big tracks, yeah. It's good. It's good. We got a. a, a a high quality track and stadium at Bellevue, which is super. Yeah, it's exactly what we needed at the time, and you know, it's just thanks to basically Chris Morton and um, his his team who managed to get it all sorted out really in the end. You know, because um, wasn't yeah, it Chris? I mean, Chris basically built the track, so you know, it's going to be a good track. I mean, I mean, that's a, a classic example of where they got um, support from the um, from the local council and mm. um, pretty much. I mean, if you look at the set of Bellevue, that's pretty much what's um, happening in Poland and, you know, where, where they've got the, the A-class sort of tracks or stadiums and it's always been well supported by um, by the cities, you know. Yeah, they've, they've exactly. Put money into it and, and uh, I mean, if you, if you look at... I mean, if I was a serious speedway rider today, I think I'd probably... You'd have to look at basing yourself in Poland and... Yeah. and um, you know, it's, it's a shame um, the the UK tracks haven't got more stadiums like Bellevue, but I mean that you know the comes with all its um, additional sort of overheads are very, very high. Yeah. I would imagine with all the additional security and modern day yeah. uh, staff and levels, you have to have like a lot mm. of more or less like a football stadium mm. sort of, and policing and security, but. Um, I can imagine the overheads are very high, which probably, um, which, you know, you need you need to maintain a level. Um, you, you need very good crowds, you know, to, to, to sustain that. Yeah, and it's just crowds. And again, like you say, local authority support is the biggest thing in Poland anyway, because um, mm -hmm. you say you just, you, you know, I mean, you couldn't exactly tell the, the local council of Ipswich you want to build a stadium like Torren over Foxhall like it is now because I think they would have that but um, but no but then if you look at like the likes of Foxhall in recent years they've had the, that new grandstand on the back straight and new VIP suites on the first and second corners and things like that so you know some stadiums are able to sort of upgrade to that sort of level really yeah I mean it's just looking pretty good you know better than it has done um, for a lot of years and um, yeah it's it's developing into a um you know, a, a, an upper-class stadium. And, uh, you know, the, Chris has made old races to the track as well, so that's yeah. um, improved the racing lines. Mm. And, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 you know, things, you know, things are looking very promising other than yeah. COVID's um, stop things, which is, gets in the way, which is bugger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't you can't have it all, though, can you? So, <laughs> no. But I mean, obviously, like you say, the track. Chris has changed the track. It's made the racing better at Ipswich. 
Um, unlike when you rode there, it was quite narrow, quite thin down the straights and into, into the corners. Yeah. I mean, um, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's one race, I think it was when you made your England debut in 84, uh, Ipswich, where it was Cookie and Lance King, I think, team riding against you or something like that. And Cookie's going everywhere down the straight trying to block you and then la- trying to get Lance through. But Lance got through in the end on, on you, but that's a classic race to see from Ipswich, really. Yeah, I, I think that is on... Um... When I had um, Dave Lanning and ITV World of Sport, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that seemed to be the only time Speedway was on the telly, and and, mm. and that was good. There's um, he, he used to do a fair bit of and the long tracks as well, you know, yeah. and, um, with Dickie Davis with his mm. you know Ash and his wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got I've got it all on DVD, mate. I've seen it all. because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... I, I was partnered with Cookie for um, that. Um, Champion, you know, when we when we did the double in '84, and and uh, he, he knew exactly where I was going to be uh, because this and, and and that was um, you know a test match at, at Ipswich, and he actually he actually stuck his leg right in front of me wheel, so I couldn't yeah. I couldn't run him over my team partner really, <laughs> so I couldn't run into him. So um, yeah, that um, he, he he knew, but yeah, no, he's great. He's, Hell of a character to ride with. So, so clever on a bike. And and I think when when he first started riding, people loved him because he's so flamboyant and, um, you know, he could, he could pull wheelies, which not many people have seen. Yeah, yeah at that time, <laughs> yeah, that's true. At the time, yeah, he pulled wheelies, put his legs about and his, his ass was off the seat and on the floor sometime. And, yeah. You know, it's really, yeah. really... Exciting! He's a showman. Yeah, he's the first. Oh, very first, much so. Really, of a great showman, and and uh, not only that, he's one hell of a talented rider. Really, really talented. Mm. And in actual fact, when I saw him, I think he went, he, he retired and then came back to help um, the um, America out in the one of the World Team Cup rounds, and he hasn't ridden for a long, you know, for for a couple of years. I don't think. And because um, he wasn't waving his arms and his legs around and sort of, he was so quick. And he's, he's really, really, and yeah. I thought, yeah, and I thought, cross cookie, if you would have done that <laughs> early, you probably, <laughs> no one could have got anywhere near at all. <laughs> no, and I mean, again, from the footage I've seen of the 80s of cookie, Lance, Dennis, all those sort of people, you know, they, they were flamboyant bloody good riders yeah. and good team riders as well. I mean, I think I've got a, a, an old video um, of, of my, obviously the 80s and things like that. I think it was against England, USA, at Ipswich, 87, 88, something like that. And um, he, uh, John Cook and Sam Malenko kept getting excluded from pulling wheelies. So I get, I thought that the referees other then weren't really for that sort of thing at that time. No, that, that was... Um... I, th- I think they had their, yeah, they, they had to sort of like realise that it was a was a uh, a, a, sh- a show, you know, and mm-hmm. they needed they needed to sort of like relax that rule a little bit, as long as it wasn't dangerous, which is mo- most of the time it's after the race or if they're half a lap in front anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, but speaking of you and Cookie, um, you guys managed to pick up a gold medal in '85, winning the World Games pairs um, at Wimbledon. Uh, yes, again, yes, again, another did. meeting on YouTube, yeah. which is good. Um, yeah. On a wet night at Plough Lane. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about that sort of meeting. <laughs> well, as um, when the meeting started, or it near, we were warming up the bikes, I still didn't have, didn't have a partner because he, he, the cookie was late. Oh and then, God! <laughs> and he, and um, he actually turned up with um, his, his, uh, having his engine tuned. And he's, I knew he's having his engine churn. I thought, well, was obviously something's happening. You know, it's gone wrong. And when he got there, he didn't have an engine in there at all. And I thought, what's he going to do with that? So like a Freddie Flintstone model. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and he bolted in and like a double overhead cam jow, which everyone had sort of been. Mm. And um, he said, oh, it was, I think it was either one of Michael's, uh, Michael Lee's or it was one of Bobby Swartz's old ones or something. But... Um, Anyway, he bolted it in, and the, the thing was like a rocket ship, you know, mm. just suited the conditions. And and the, the other thing which people don't re- realise, I think he forgot his levers, and and um, 
<laughs> so, someone put, lent him some some overalls, some camouflage overalls, and you know he you know rode the rode, rode the meeting like that. Which oh was, man! Yeah. <laughs> I, only only him could do that sort of thing and pull it off with the yeah. style, probably. Yeah, yeah. Off the style and that uh, was um, and because later on he had his you know um, famous like camo levers made, you know, because like, yeah. was a tribute tribute. But um, yeah, no, no, he's unbelievable that night. I mean, I I wasn't sort of at at me. Peter, by any means, he just <laughs> okay. um, well, I filled filled in the places, but you know, he he, he did the work. Mm. It was a famous job. Yeah, because again, there's some there's some brilliant races from that meeting featuring yourself and, and Cookie and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it must must have been nice just to win something as a pair, as an Ipswich pair, really. You know, um, in such a nice meeting. Yeah, I I, I mean that that seems a bit strange because Kenny Carter was riding it, and you think, well. We're an English pair, and, and you think, well, it, 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 it's, it's nice that it's a club. It's mm. a club pair. Yeah. But, um, the thing thing is, they never ran it again. And, no. And and um, we were really getting excited because uh, we thought, oh, it means we'll have to go to Tokyo to defend it. You know, and I think <laughs> that's when, <laughs> when the next World Games was. So, um, But no, it didn't happen. It was a shame. But it would have yeah. been good if- yeah, it would have been I great. mean, I mean, you couldn't defend it in in Rotslav, could you? A few years ago, you know, <laughs> when when they came back again when it was at Rotslav. But yeah, I know, I know what you mean because that would that would be an experience if you could manage to defend it the next time in, like, say, in Tokyo or wherever it was. But uh, never happened, unfortunately. <laughs> no, which is, which is a shame. But uh, no, it was good. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, I've got looking back at your individual honours again from around that sort of time, you know, you managed to um, make the World Pairs final in 86 with Wiggy. Um, yeah, I think it was yeah. in Pocking. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the famous um, uh, Speedway Star headline, Pocking Hell. <laughs> I think that I've seen that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah, we, uh, Wiggy fell out with Phil Ryzen on that one for several years. <laughs> oh, I bet he did. I bet he did. So what? Yeah, what so what went wrong in that meeting then for for you guys? And anything in particular? Well, well, it started okay. I mean, six in the race didn't help on a fairly narrow, oh, narrow okay. track. I mean, it wasn't really, you know. Um, I, I think I ended up winning the first race. Um, I think Wiggy was. I can't remember if I was on the outside or off the inside, but. He got boxed in either way, or, mm. and um, so we started averagely, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those days where, um, as the, as the weather got hotter, the track got slicker, and, yeah. and I think our batch of races are out just as they watered it, you know. Ah, and so, yeah. it, 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 when you get um, uh, you know, situations like that sometimes it is just pop luck how, how you get off the start, you know, and then, and then could it have been the next race or, you know, different batch of, you know, or, or the, the gate positions would have been a little bit more favourable to yeah. the opposition we're against. Uh, it could have been a different story. Mm. You know, it just worked out. If, if, you, if, you, if you could sort of plan out, map out how wrong a meeting could go on a piece of paper... <laughs> That was the one. <laughs> that was the one meeting, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it went to the plan, it went disastrously wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it went the opposite of what you wanted, yeah. put it that way, then, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah. but I mean, it must have been, it must, riding with Wiggy must have been good fun for yourself, both grass trackers and things like that. I bet you must have been a great partner to, to ride with. Yeah, I, I, I mean, um, I say we were rivals on the, on, on the grass track to start with. And, um, you know, we, our careers sort of kind of followed each other or mirrored each other. So more Simon got involved with the Speedway uh, a bit earlier than I, I did. Yeah. Um, but we kind of, grass track wise, we, we both kept that side up and up and going. You know, we both had, had the love for and, and the, the long tracks, obviously, in Germany. Mm. So, um, hence, um, you know, a lot of our fixtures were identical, so so we ended up um, 
you know, sharing, you know, the, the expenses for tra traveling to meetings. And, uh, you know, and um, we found novel ways of getting to meetings, you know, cheap, cheap flights and um, <laughs> early on a Sunday morning on a, the last hop over on a jumbo jet. So you get cooked <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very living yeah. it up. <laughs> living it up, yeah. So then um, cheap, cheap flight as well. Mm. And then um, I think for a couple of years, I had a, I had a van out there where, where um, you know, we doubled up so we could actually save on our expenses when we actually got there as well. So, so did you like have a... Uh, yeah, following on from there, then Wiggy got his big truck and... and, and <laughs> Uh, and, and we, we used to, you know, uh, team up together as, there as well. Yeah, when, when we could. I mean, sometimes yeah. we could, but and but it, it got a little bit. Um, there's only so many when weekend speedway started to take take hold. There's only so many places you can be at one time. So unfortunately, um, you know, the when you when you pick to represent your country, that took priority, obviously, over. Any any individual stuff? Which yeah, I'll come out Polish or, or or whatever, really. Yeah, obviously, then um, you had a bit, bit more be. bit more flexibility of moving around, unlike you get nowadays, sort of thing. Where it seems like Poland this year are trying to clamp over all these top superstars down in one place, and then and then only go after one league. You guys were able to just travel here, there, and everywhere, and had I can imagine so many meetings. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. We and and that to be to be honest that. The, the modern day rider today don't they don't really get the variety of the track sport. So you, you you've got you've got a, um, a track racing license. Yeah. And you're only using a third of it. You know, there's there's the, the other sports where um, um, you know if you're multidisciplined, you 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 capture a, a, a little bit from each of them, and it makes you hell of a um, a more versatile rider. Um, and one sport will probably help help you on a, in, in another sport. Um, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I felt that brought my speedway on leaps and bounds, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And likewise, the speedway fitness brought on um, me my grass tracks and long tracks. Yeah, like you said, they, they bounce off each other, really, is what it is. I mean, uh, you look at the guys that you rode with, like you say, Wiggy, Martin Hagen, Trevor Banks, uh, Simo when he was probably in the grass and the PC, people like that. You know, they all had that sort of grass track pedigree a little bit, which then obviously went to Speedway, and then they were able to come backwards and forwards between the two, the two disciplines, really. Yeah, you could easily sort of ro race on a long track and a grass track on a Sunday and then sort of be at Wolverhampton on a Monday, you know. Yeah. Really. And, and that wasn't wasn't an issue on a different bike, different technique, mm. and uh, you sat on it, and it, you felt just as home on 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 the, either either the bikes. Mm. But also, um, it made you. I mean, all those great great riders you mentioned, we all rode very similar as well as we're a uh, up, up up front over up, up front rider, as yeah. in you know your your, your heads, your hat, your, your your head and your shoulders are at the front of the bike, but your leg forward, you know. And um, and I and, and I still look at the the riders who are going very very fast today, who are very successful, still ride that same way. So that yeah. tells me that well, other than Bartosz Schmarz leg, <laughs> well, he's the exception. <laughs> he's an exception. But um, other than Bartosz, I mean, he's very loose on a bike, and very fluid, be beautiful to watch, to be honest. But um, whether uh, had it had if he'd been based in England, whether he could get round all the English tracks like that, mm. we must be seen. Probably could, but because um, he's a talent, a very talented rider. But um, I think probably uh, for longevity, you know, uh, I think that that's the type of rider you have to be. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, look at Ty. He's still got the upright foot forward style really you know he's got yeah. the classic speedway style um you know and then obviously you rode against in your day the likes of mark laram joe screen the leg trailers who are spectacular to watch you know and of course they'd go bloody quick as well probably they could but they 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 semi leg trail didn't they they sort of like um, as a false one <laughs> I, used <to laughs> drop, I used to drop the knee and but keep the knee forward but just sort of drop it and 
to get the le leg out of the way because the leg leg was, you know, um, get, getting a bit of nuisance. But they sort of, <laughs> yeah, because you, you get, that's the only trouble. I mean, I think everyone starts leg trailing when they first ride a 500 on the on the grass grass track because yeah, um, if you're not quite strong enough to hang on to it, the, the first thing you do is drop your leg back, and you that you actually do find it very easy. Which is fine until you run over it a few times. You just try to run over it a few times, and you soon learn. Yeah, that that's not the thing to do, and and uh, and you have to change. You have to change if you, if you want to not have a false hit by the time you're yeah twenty five or you know, or, or you know all your all your ligaments or in your yeah you know, yeah, but also you, also with legs. Also, with the, like the leg trailing, is that the fact that you end up on your ass more as well? We well, do, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, go, going back to your own career, um, you know, you managed to stay in switch to was it eighty eight or eighty nine? You moved to Reading, was it? Uh, do you know what I really can't remember? Because <laughs> I, I, I know that it was, I know it was switched down nationally. That's why you moved. That's why you moved to Reading. Yeah, like, I can't remember yeah, when well, they yeah. moved, when they went yeah. down, but. Um, so yeah, was that a, was that a move that you wanted to do? Was go to Reading from Ipswich? Um, well, to, to, to be honest, I, there wasn't really much of a choice because Ipswich had dropped down to um, uh, decided mm -hmm. to uh, run in the national league. Yeah. So uh, there wasn't a place for us, you know. And, and at the time, um, the first first and second division, I think, it was national league. Um, it, it, there wasn't the I was classed as an old hand. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I had to find a, a first division club. Mm. And um, and it's just pure coincidence that um, uh, Pat Bliss and Bill Dorr um, uh, were short of riders, as well, uh, you know, for to the start of their new season. So, um, and, and Chris Shears... Um, you know, um, joined together with uh, Pat and Bill Dorr. Yeah. And uh, I don't think anyone really knew how it would turn out, but I met um, Chris uh, was dealing on my behalf and very, you know, very, very fair promoter. I must say with Chris, I mean, some people sort of say, okay, well, you know, he, he, he probably wasn't the most favoured promoter ever to have a hip six, but to be fair for Chris, he, he, he he looked after me well, um, and he had Speedway at, in, in his heart. And um, when, when I met um, Chris Fum, he said, this, this is what I proposed to do. Come, come and meet me um, at the bottom of the A12 with Pat and Bill and just see how the discussion goes, and, and uh, we'll go from there. And, cool. uh, and after that, that, you know, that's... Um, you know that's that's how we ended up signing for Reading, which is, uh, to be fair, I, I I would say Pat and Bill Dor equally. You know they um, were very treated me very well, and um, as with the rest of the Reading riders, and uh, that um, is probably part of the well, mo probably the most important part of the. How we how we how we went to do the double? Yeah, and I mean riding with the likes of Herr Johnson, Jan Anderson, uh, Armando Castagna at that time was he there when you first went there? Armando was yeah um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah yeah that that I mean if, if you look at the picture that it's one hell of a team it really mm. was Todd Wiltshire, Tony Olsen you know there's um, uh, Dave Mullet Dave Mullet was. Um, <laughs> He just turned it into an absolute legend. I mean, him, him and Per together were just absolute, a, absolutely superb. You yeah. Know, and, uh, incredible to watch Jan Anderson, you know, that's, uh, and uh, Dave Steen. Look at that, Dave. Dave yeah. Steen. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, he had a lot of. Um... Nathan Simpson. There's, 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 a, there's a few in within those um, years. Obviously, we lost that. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously you had um had phil morris come through the ranks late late later on in the years didn't you, you had phil morris come through so um yeah, yeah. phil yeah 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 he, he he came along and um yeah with uh i think later on mitch yeah mitch here was 
join 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 back to Reading as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so mean, that, some... that, that, that team was just um, oh, it's just absolutely incredible. Tim Tim Sugar being the, the team manager. I mean, he 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 knew exactly how to um, approach us all, address us all, and uh, I mean, we, we, I mean, I was privileged to be the captain of, mm-hmm. of the side, and. Um, and really, the, the guys um, made it so easy. In, in actual fact, we're all, um, I would say, probably, although I was a captain side, but every, everyone was their own mini captain. You know, they all, they all, all took on responsibilities and, and uh, took the cause, you know, and uh, that uh, it, it's ever it's, so it's difficult to try and find a, a winning formula, why, why a team successful, but. And to try and replicate it and repeat it, but um, it starts from the top, really. With so with um, Chris Patton, Bill, yeah, uh, and um, and they're true to their word, and they paid paid on time, paid well, and that um, that reflected all the way through, and um, that's some part of the success. But not only that. Um, the results, if, if someone was a little bit down, we'd sort of like um, help each other with well, ride one of my engines or ride one of mm-hmm. my bikes, you know. And, um, and uh, yeah, that worked. Yeah. That's kind of like the winning formula, really. If you, if you help everybody out, you know, everybody again clicks, gels, and away you go. And I mean, um, with probably Jan Anderson being. Uh, having so much input into engines and things like that, you know, that again is a little technical thing you had on your side at the time. Yeah, I, I mean, um, yeah, when, when uh, Per won the World Championship that year, I mean, at the start of the season, he's pulling his hair out. He's having a <laughs> top torrid time, you know, couldn't, yeah. couldn't find his form. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, I'd, I'd lent him an engine one meet and, and he, he, he said he, 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 his performance is straight away improved then Yan um uh took a couple of his engines and did, did some work and i think Johnsy uh mm. took one as well and and, and, I f- and i think probably the, the one per one world final one probably originally was um Johnsy engine actually mm. and, yeah yeah Yan obviously much serviced it yeah but, um, that, that originated as a Johnsy one and sometimes it just takes that little bit of confidence on an engine, you know, and a bam, away you go. I mean, fortunately for Per, it all clicked on one night. Well, yeah, I mean, he worked for it. I mean, no mm-hmm. doubt about it. I mean, I was there, I was in the pits of Amando that night. And, um, I mean, uh, Per was so nervous. It, it was incredible when he knew he could be a world, you know, in the chance of being world champion. He, he, mm-hmm. You know, he was just absolutely... He's, he's, Coke was up like that, and sort of looking <laughs> at the pits, and he's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he really was, yeah. And um, and I thought, well, that's the man you need to leave him alone and let him chat. Yeah, get, yeah. His, get, his, get that get that first ride out of the way, and you've been fine. That's a get that first ride out of the way and set yeah, set himself in the way he went. That was after after about the fourth, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I think it must have been. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, um, yeah, he was yeah I mean. Yeah, I mean, well, per great rider, you know, it must have been a great guy to be around and things like that. Anyway, before he, before and after, he was world champion, really. Yes, yeah, he is, yeah, and um, you know, it's just such a shame, you know, um, you know, speedway. I mean, it's a dangerous sport, and yeah, and I say even now, look at the guys. I mean, they've, um, you know, that what what we're paid and what we work, you know, that although it. We're fortunate and very privileged to do something we enjoy. Um, compared to other sports, it's uh, the sacrifices, you know, um, and, and, the, and, and the losses. It, it isn't, isn't the reward isn't there? You know, it's nowhere near no. enough for the for the, for the risks you, we we all take, which yeah. is a shame. And I'd, I'd like to, you know, to see, um, you know, a lot more. Um, uh, Big time money, you know, to 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 to, to be in the sport like golf, mm. you know, whether it will ever get that to that stage, I don't know. But that's, that's well, we never know. 
you never know after having COVID, you might turn a corner. You know, you never know. You might get something, come around the corner and smack us in the face sort of thing with it. Yeah, we'll, we'll grow with three heads. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, true. <laughs> there is that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, turning back to your own individual success of uh, 89, um, you managed to make the world final for a second time after getting in at Amsterdam, Amsterdam in 87. Let's just touch on that one, the 87 final. That must have been an experience for yourself, having a, your first world final and being a two-day world final. Yeah, it's quite ironic, really, because um, you know, had it been a one-day world final, I would have been on a in a, in a runoff for some sort, uh, you know, for a rostrum place. But yeah. um, the the two-day final, uh, first day was in in the night time, and then and on Saturday night, and the Sunday was in daytime, and it was a total change of track, reversal of gate positions, and mm. And um, yeah, it just didn't didn't work anywhere near like it did on the Saturday night. Which um, the Saturday night, it's that the, everything was just perfect. The starts were perfect where uh, where I was on the track, you know, it r- really worked. Um, but <laughs> but this year, look, looking at the Grand Prix formula, formula for two days, I think. Well, actually, like I, I enjoyed certainly enjoyed watching them. And yeah. I thought, what, two, two days not so bad after all, but I was really swearing when, I, when I, <laughs> in '87. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is though that they had a this year they had them both at night time. They didn't have one during the day, so you know that was yeah. the difference there. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, watching the videos of of Amsterdam, it looked so big and so flat. You know, it looked like it was a real it was an easy track, but a hard track to ride as well. Yeah, I, I mean. Um, uh, you, you had to read it very well, and um, you, you, and, and watch where they're where they're grading on what particular corners. So um, they, they changed their um, technique had technique of where they're grading and putting the dirt. So um, I had um, you know um, someone watching where they were, how they're grading it, so they could tell yeah. me where they're exactly where they're dropping the dirt. Or if it stayed up top, so one one race to the next, you had to ride the, the corners um, totally differently, of, you know, to, to what you did the race before, yeah. um, just because of where they put it. So if you did, if you weren't watching, and if you moved out to to the dirt which they just brought back, then you're just giving away, you know, you're just lo- losing yards. So um, away in places. So yeah. um, that was that was part of this. Um, what you had to do there anyway yeah and again you know experience made your first world final um but like you say two days and not necessarily the greatest thing in the world but um moving on to 89 managed to make your second world final in munich um managed to get third place um was that a surprise to yourself to even be a chance with winning the championship well, well yeah I, I mean um I'd sort of work work towards it. I think I'd, I'd struggle a little bit the, 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 with form wise leading up to it, and um, uh, did something um, with drastic. With, um, went to Trevor Hedges' place, did something drastic um, in the midweek, and I think even Tre- Trevor was scratching his head and pulling his hair out. <laughs> and um, and whatever we whatever we did, it worked anyway. You know, and um, and uh, and that 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 engine, that, actually that engine, we built it in haste. Well, it, mm. it wasn't really; it's was, it's one we we adapted, but we built it very quickly in haste, and and that worked really well. And I, I actually that's that I had so much success on that one particular engine; that's unbelievable. Is that like one engine you favoured for the whole season then? Well, um, it. <laughs> I just found something which worked. You know, we'd um, we we uh, we had some smoothbore carburetors which I ran with without any needles in, which no one no one at the time could manage to um, fathom that fathom it out. And uh, I actually got a load of micro drills and was drilling drilling jets and going up uh, <laughs> five microns a time to get it to run them perfectly, but. But I, I guess what you had uh, was uh, the equivalent then as a as, as a, a flat slide carburetor, really. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually just a, you know, when it's flat out, it's just a just a thirty-four mil hole. 
Mm. You know, there's no restrictions at all. So, so that is a bit of advantage for us. And uh, um, it works with the, the megaphones we, 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 we had at the time. And um, we had a ma massive set of heavy flywheels made up as well. So that, um, that, that seemed to work um, on, on the surfaces yeah. of that era, you know. Yeah. Not everywhere, well, but, but no. certainly um, made made it made a big difference. Did you did you enjoy riding that Munich track at all? Was it a sort of track that favoured you? It was um, typical typical continental track, flat. You know, not a lot of banking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think the biggest entertainment I found was watching Ro Roman Matacek. You know, when he, when yeah, he, that's he, it. Yeah. <laughs> Taking chunk, chunks of wood with his plank <laughs> cases off the, off the inside. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, at the end of that, we ran off with my old buddy Wiggy again. Yeah. You know, his old mucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better loss of concentration on my part. Um, should have should have really not. Um, it's the only start I missed all night, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got the bit of me on that one. But. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was just like the uh, occasion of being in the in the runoff, you know, just from for a medal, you know. I mean, I know you got a third place and it was a runoff for second place, but still, you know, it would be nice to get one over Wiggy, I suppose, in the back of your mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, no, good, you know. Yeah, yeah and, I'm, and I mean, it's a, it's a fabulous stadium to have it in as well as a world final, you know. Um, I think they they still, they did get a lot of people there as well. I, I, I don't know what the official figures were, but it's still um, put some of the, um, you know, I mean, get big crowds at Cardiff, but I think it's on part of that, maybe, maybe even more. Mm. Uh, I think, I think with also with um, the Munich Stadium, it's because it was so, so spread out, you know, it's quite a big arena to have it in. I think everyone was quite massive. spread out. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. Massive, yeah. Yeah. But, um, um, and then go second with the World Finals, you made one more. Um, that was 91 in Gothenburg. Um, I won't speak too much about that because you, you finished quite way down the order. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I, I mean, 1990 should have been the, 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 the year I made it at Bradford, but I didn't didn't get there. I went out at um, Felsted after winning the overseas final. Mm. Um, that was probably going to be the year where I felt I could really be world champion and and not even not, not didn't even make the world final. So. <laughs> Yeah, was that was that a case of then that intercontinental final that it didn't suit you then the track or is it just not, it was yeah, not your day? Yeah, yeah, no, it just didn't suit whatever I had, the three the three bites I had, whatever I just had so much power that I just couldn't make anything work. You know, it's like just uh, it's like having three chainsaws. You know, just, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I needed something so. I, need, I needed the 250, basically. That's what oh, right. Needed. Okay. <laughs> it, it was not one I owed her a grip on the place. It was just shocking. Mm. Sort of like, a, like <laughs> yeah. a normal sort of Danish track at the time, slick, you know, um, it, where it, you it, went. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do my homework anywhere near enough. Well, you know, just really, you know, messed that one up. Yeah, just just caught you out, you know, unfortunately. But yeah. say so you managed to make it to the '91 final in Gothenburg, um, where Jano Pedersen won the won the title that year. Um, what are your sort of memories of the road to the final then, and things like that? But, well, that Gothenburg one was yeah. uh, actually atrocious because um, we've been there. I don't think we've been there three days, and and with half an hour to go, we still hadn't got any of our bikes with the noise control. Oh no! So, uh, <laughs> it's just like uh, Mitch. Well, Mitch, we're the only two. Me and Mitch Shearer were actually spitting feathers. In actual fact, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch in the end, the crap, people were in the stadium, and we're still trying to get our bikes through. Mm -hmm. And uh, very um, the scrutiny here was the noise control was very um, adamant that they that they would fail, you know, and we 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 we, we simply wouldn't be riding. The FIM said, you still have 20 minutes. I said, but we've been here three fucking days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what do you think we can do in 20 minutes, which we haven't done in three days? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I, I think Mitch 
sort of like did the smartest thing and he, he took his foot and kicked, kicked the meter about, you know, five <laughs> meters across the, across the grass, but it still seemed to work. <laughs> and it came back and probably just ran a bit noisier still. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it is it calibrated and the bloke said no, so I kicked it. So it's not calibrated now, is it? So <laughs> <laughs> so was that? Is it, were they like the um, like the toll sort of silences and stuff like that then back then, or was it so well, completely well, different? We're on the, we're, yeah, I was running megaphones, which worked really, really well with the setup I had. Um, mm. Obviously, we practiced on them and. Um, but then we couldn't. They didn't. They didn't have the noise control. Um, uh, well, they kind of had it before the meeting started, but just at the end of the practice. Oh right, and, yeah. Um, but in, in in the end, um, I actually uh, uh, can you hear those? I can remember the, that row silence or the Professor Row. I think one one of the, they had a vintage display there. Mm. And one of the um, guys um, from from the vintage who had one of his bikes, he said, "Look, I've got a real old, and it's like it is about four foot long." This side, <laughs> he, said it, it, he said it's really, really, really quiet. And uh, I said, "Well, kind of borrow it." So I put it on, and it went went through. But it, it, the bike just had, you know, it just killed it. it just said, "Yeah, nothing, you know." And, and I was just wasting my time, you know, mm. and. And, I, and, I, and I, I think, you know, that they, we obviously must have upset someone, a pair of us, me and Mips, because I, I think, you know, we're singled out and either, either as, a, as, a, as a, a threat, you know, to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, you know, for, for, for getting the roster in place or, you know, um, but we're, we're singled out without any doubt. And, and that, was, that was uncalled for the, the way. The way it, um, you know, we were, yeah, yeah way, basically the way the way you were being treated, yeah, like you say, you know, it's, it seems a bit weird that on the on the world final night, you know, I mean, they could have done it on, on the practice session, you know, yeah, um, sure. and, and gone gone through it all because it would not made much of a difference, really, I can imagine. But um, I mean, the pair of us were absolutely spitting feathers, and yeah. after that, I mean, we were riding in the Polish league, and um, we went to. Uh, we're supposed to be in riding for Unia Rolinski Tarnoff the, the next day, and, and we weren't keen at, at all going. And, and Mitchell said, "Well, he's, he said he's going to be here on a plane. You know, he's going to bring his plane." So, and, and and we said, "Oh no, I ain't going. This, you know, bad enough." <clears throat> and, and we all just ready, ready to pack up going home. And he said, "He's here. He's here. And he's brought his plane." And we all went, "Oh bloody hell!" So, <laughs> so. <laughs> So we both had to take an engine. Um, mm -hmm. Both had all obviously kit stuff. So he said, "Yeah, he's at. Um, uh, I suppose it would have been Stockholm. Um, no, Gothenburg would have been at the local Gothenburg, yeah, Gothenburg airport. Yeah. So so we get get all of, all through the bags and it, you know the, the on the domestic side, and the international side is closed. So and we get on a bus, you know, take take you to the to your um, holding spot, you know, where, yeah. the, where the aircraft is. And we get off this sort of bus and we look at this thing, this plane, and it, it's like, um, it, it was, uh, it looked like an airfix air, air kit. It really did it. <laughs> I mean, my, my, wheel, my wheelbarrow's got bigger wheels on, on, on it and, and the grass rat bite had better shock absorbers. And, and this bloody thing that, as it's called, a bill gun, is painted like um, with enamel paint, uh, like a dragonfly. Yeah. And, it's, um, and, and we're on that bloody thing. Um, well, we didn't think it would, have, it would take off with all the weight <laughs> to start with. And, and we had to land twice for fuel and for customs, but there weren't any customs there. And we thought, well, it's never going to take off again. And we'd, on the grass runway and we we took off and, and, and I said look he said oh, we, uh, we need more power he said we we, we are full power full, full power <laughs> and, and this then this we just took off and, and, and just as we took off we had to do a lot of bank and we just missed the top of this church spire oh, you know, God. Looking at the, 
and, and we thought oh, we're going to die. You know, we're really going <laughs> to die. You know, and, and uh, I, I just think about it. I, I just think, blimey, you know, just um, talk about a close escape. And at one stage as well, we're <clears throat> going across the water, and the the the, the, the wind the, the wind was going pushing us. But well, we weren't going forwards. We we're going sideways. <laughs> Oh, he said, well, he's carry on like that. He said, We're going to run out of fuel. Not, and we, he said, We must go down in the water. <laughs> oh, no, that's all you need to hear in there. <laughs> it really made us feel sort of. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it was a. Uh, experience. <laughs> really oh, I can, ima- I can imagine it was, mate. And I mean, I imagine there's some wild stories about getting through Poland and things like that at that, that sort of time. Well, well, I'll tell you, we got we we we, we got got to the track. Uh, uh, um, I, I don't know actually know where the track was, but we both never dropped a point, and mm. because we we're so like we kissed both, we literally got out me and Mitch, and we just kissed the ground because like we both <laughs> you know we we're, we're, we're alive, and then getting out of the country, getting out of Poland at um, um, at the German border, Frank Frankfurt Oder. They um, going going through that way. Um, they said, "Well, how, how did you get in? You know, there's, there's no stamp on you." <laughs> we had everyone had everyone had passport extensions and pages used to just drop out of you. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, sort of like everywhere, all these visas and sort of. <laughs> and actually, it's, it's a great passport to keep because it's you know, it's, every time you went in, you got a stamp out, you got mm. a stamp. And, until you put it on your dash of the van and someone puts a carburetor on full of methanol and it all oh, blows no. into one. And, and that's what you're trying to show customs and to get out of the country, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I mean, um, yeah, except, except I've, I've heard stories on other podcasts and videos and things like that of all these wild rides of the early days of riding in Poland and things like that. You know, but uh, yeah. was, was you was you part of like the first sort of batch of um, English riders or British League riders, should I say, to go into Poland? Well, it was, yeah, yeah. Me, me and Mitch, we went. Um, PC ra- rang us up and, and said um, he's had some Polish clubs been on the phone. Are, are you interested? I so thought might as well give it a go. And um, he, uh, he he said, you know, they, he said, well, I'll you know, help help you get in contact with them, which he did. And um but I I wrote the uh, club called U- Unia Tarnoff and that was um uh <clears throat> it's not far from the it's well it's just before Zhezov, which is mm. probably about an hour off from the Russian border, which is probably Tarnoff's probably about two and a half hours I suppose from the Russian border. But it's a long way down South Poland. Oh right yeah even if you float a Warsaw that's a about four and a half, five hour drive at that time yeah. on on shitty roads. They really were <laughs> crap, and, and um, yeah, they they really were. And, and me and Mitch, we used to uh, they had like a I wouldn't call it a hotel. They called it a hotel. I, I'd call it. I guess it's probably. I haven't I haven't actually been to prison, but I, you can you can <laughs> probably it's probably. They're probably better looked after if you know if, it, if it, it's what that's what it it's the bad it was just the basics I'd say yeah, yeah the only <laughs> thing you're missing is the prison bars yeah that's right basically well you weren't allowed out they wouldn't let us out they wouldn't let us out, out of their sights once we're there <laughs> so we're at the stadium that's where they are they're going to ride ride they're going to race and we used to sort of lay in the sort of bunks underneath which was where all the bikes were were, were kept. And in in the in the in the workshop above, and we sort of we, think, oh, we said to ah oh, we can hear movement and that I suppose they're getting all the bikes out and getting them all ready. So we ought to yeah. walk up in a little while. So we get all this rush and I thought, how many bikes are there, mate? In the hell of a and what it actually was, they don't move the bike. But we walked up, says the bikes are well well gone. You know, there's a place was stripped bare. And that is the that is the um we're we're under the turnstiles and it's a the, the, <laughs> oh, right. the coming in and when we look, Mitch just said, "Look at that!" and and there was like twenty thousand people there just from nowhere, you know, and we <laughs> and we just <laughs> couldn't believe it. 
couldn't believe it. Then that um, there's every week, you know, it's just absolutely stacked. Mm. Yeah, of course, with the um, likes of yourself, Mitch Shearer, probably the, the superstars of the time, you know, these guys, these people weren't going to see you every week. Or they were if you were home fans, but, you know, I mean, it would be like, uh, you know, it's come to see the, these these big European stars who we hear so much about what we rarely see in Poland. Well, yeah, 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 I guess so, yeah. I, I mean, they, they learn a lot from us. I mean, they, uh, that's possibly why we're there. They, they uh, what to know, you know, we all about the bikes, the tuners, where we've got the, the, the pretty looking stuff from for them, mm-hmm. you know, the levers, the, the, you know, and, and within a, within a, a, well, I would say the first season they ordered, uh, they've gone to Otto Latinama and ordered sort of like um, nine or ten engines and, you know, and then, you know, the next year they all got the snazzy lips. So it wasn't long. It wasn't long. No. They, they, were, they were catching up quickly. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't need a lot of sort of encouragement. Yeah. And obviously they learned, um, we practiced with them as well. We had to be there early, you know, on um, to uh, so that they insisted we practice. But mind you, even if um, there's a we're watching sitting there once there's a football match going on, and that's Union Town off the Jez off the local derby, and mm-hmm. and there's no one watching. There's about 150 people or, or whatever in the stadium. There's no one watching, and um, I said, "Oh, it's quite a good game actually," <laughs> and they. They said, oh, uh, he said, you must get ready uh, the, the, the training. You must train. I said, well, the, the football is just started. No, 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 no. The, the football stopped when we stay stop. I said, yeah, they told me the junior time off the shed off big derby. But, but um, he said, no, no, we, it's, it's a speedway stadium. It's our stadium. We, 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 we say when. The football stops, they stop. So they, <laughs> as easy as that, yeah. yeah just easy. So, so they just walked out and um, they just stopped the football match. Yeah, just, and, and, and they just played with them. Oh, like, oh, you could see them you know, go to the referee and then all yeah. that happened. And they did, and they stopped, they just stopped for a good couple of hours while we practiced. And then they came out and finished the game off. <laughs> it was like one big half time for them then really <laughs> yeah, yeah so bizarre yeah. unbelievable yeah That's but cool. I mean I mean a lot a lot's obviously come on since those early days when you guys went out to Poland I mean Poland now is obviously the dominant force um, do you do you manage to watch any of the Polish league at all some some of it I did yeah when, when um, <clears throat> on the um, oh what was it the, the Premier Sports was it yeah Premier Sports yeah, yeah. Premier Sports yeah um, the, the the first couple were, weren't very good, so I, you know um, it didn't quite seem to go. <laughs> you know, wasn't the, the, the angles and the pictures weren't very good at. Yeah. You know, but they, they, later on, it they they I watched some of them later on, and they looked some um, looked pretty good. Mm. The GPs yeah. look good as well. Yeah, with the the GPs always look good. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Crime of the creme of the clem, creme, haven't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it has to be a good show. But um, yeah, um, yeah. moving on to the to some of your obviously other team sort of success on the, the FIM's sort of international level, uh, you managed to do a few World Team Cups. Your first one being in Long Beach in, in California. I mean, yeah. that must that must have been an experience. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, that is. Um, I, did, I, I used to do a few meetings in America, actually, on the way to Australia. But after that, all oh, right. Um, uh, well, I'd say a few, but for, for Ivan, Ivan Major I used to do mm. this. Uh, uh, he used to ride on the the eighth of mile at Ascot, Ascot one night, and then the next not, night on the on the half mile on the uh, on the uh, sprint car track. Yeah, yeah. So that was good. And Long Beach, that's a. a I, I, I didn't mind the track at all, actually. And the, you know, the stage is a bit narrow. A lot of straights were long, mm. quite, quite tight, quite tight corners. Um, uh, it, I think we were a young side, and obviously um, Bowie and Pratty they um, chose. Um, no, it's actually no, it's John John Berry. John Berry, yeah. Yeah, I think Colin Pratt came along. Mm. Um, 
with Trevor Hedge, actually. So, um, yes, yeah, John Berry, and so that is the start of a. I mean, John got stick for it for, for, for look down for a young squad, but he yeah. felt that it's the time, you know, to chuck the young ones yeah. in. So, uh, yeah, because I think in that um, '85 season, all the test matches you had the the kids in it. He put all the kids in. Uh, Andy Smith uh, made his debut in the test matches, and people were like that. He he flung in there really. Um, and obviously, the likes of yourself, uh, Wiggy, um, and also Kenny Carter in the team. You know, unfortunately, yeah. Kenny didn't make it to, to Long Beach because he got injured in the Intercontinental final um, mm. that year. But um, but still, you know, for for still a green behind the ears sort of rider yourself, you know, you must have thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Well, that's why he done it. I mean, he he, he had a um, you know a lot of forward forward vision, so um, he knew that um, you know you there's a new crop coming along. And he and he uh, and that's that is the way to do it. Was chuck chuck him in, chuck him in, and uh, there's a bit of experience there as well. John Davis um, um, was out there, uh, yeah. so he didn't rely solely on you know um, the young ones. But so yeah. Cal Calvin was out there with us as well. Richard Knight. Um, so I mean, well, it's later on. Uh, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, like you said, John Berry's vision gave the stepping stones to to Kelvin, uh, Richard Knight. Yeah, and um, let's say you had Phil Collins in the team as well. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, yeah. And, and all that sort of thing. I mean, you still came third. You beat the Swedes, so you know you can't really grumble with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's nice to get. A, I don't think I ever got me bronze medal for that one. I got you know. Oh. Um, <laughs> 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 I got the one for the, uh, the the one the world when we won in um, eighty nine. That was um, at yeah. Bradford. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, I mean that that must have been a, a nice feeling to win it. But obviously the day was overshadowed by Eric's crash. Um, but I mean, for yourself, was it was it a good day for yourself? Well, it, no, not really, because I, I actually um, was suffering really bad from a heavy cold. Oh, and, right. Um, I, I, felt like, I felt like absolute crap, actually. And, <laughs> and my dad had given me some antibiotics, and he's, he's a veterinary surgeon. So, oh, oh, right, okay. So, <laughs> so um, and I was um, uh, alcohol tested, drug tested, um, the full works, and and they sort of, and he said, well, what are you taking? And I gave him these antibodies. He said, well, they're for dogs. I said, well, they are. So, he said, well, he said, "Well, he said, he said, well, can't really call that a sport, sport enhancing drug, can you?" <laughs> I, only if you're doing dog racing, you might have been done differently. <laughs> no, so um, yeah, no, that's um, that's fine. They're just an- antibiotics, so that's good. yeah. But um, yeah, it's a fun, that is a strange. I said, didn't feel particularly good, and. Um, and what happened to Eric? I mean, that really well, and Crossy and and Rick, Ricky Miller, they all they all never rode in the meeting. Mm. You know, it didn't take yeah. a further part, but you know, well, Eric really, and um, you know, that just deflated. Not just so much some of the Danish team, but all, all of us, to be honest, because we're all all like say, so a like a big big family, really. You know, we look look yeah. after each other, know each other, we sort of. You know, you know, help each other out when we can, mm. and uh, yeah, it's very, very sad. Very, very and obviously, at that time, you're traveling all around because a lot of you were doing like you take the, the speedway, the grass track, the long track, you know. So, you let's like say that, that you guys must have been the, probably the closest bunch of speed riders been for a long time. Yeah, we were, yeah. And and so, we, you know, we, we just helped each other out whenever we could if it's. Mm. Uh, shipping bikes around, we're always sort of um, um, talking to each other, and, and uh, yeah, no, it's, that's that's all part of it. And that's, that's yeah, it. yeah. And it's just but, such a sign. Poor, poor old, I'll never forget. Afterwards, um, we're sponsored by um, British Coal, being the Sunbright Lions. We're yeah. sponsored by British Coal, and afterwards we um, met with the. Uh, the directors after in the, in the one uh, I think it's in the Nova Hotel, uh, and everyone was so deflated. And, and I'll never never forget Colin Pratt. He was just 
absolutely, you know, heartbroken. He really yeah. was. You know, he's, um, I'll, I'll never forget that. No. Yeah. Of, course, of course, Colin was team manager and promoter at, at Craven. Of course, it, it's very close to Eric. And yeah, I, can ima- I, can, I can imagine he was very distraught that day. Yeah, and Crossy as well, you know. Oh, yeah, Crossy as well, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah and, and he knew, knew them all um, deeply, you know, very, very, yeah. very well. But um, moving on from that unfortunate day, you know, it was a good day for England to, to win the World Cup and still you're still part of that team as the last English team to win the World Cup. So, you know, you still yeah. had that with pride. <laughs> <laughs> um, you managed to uh, win the uh, Czech Golden Helmet a couple of times. Um, yeah. Yes, that so, was, um, yeah, first one in uh, 89 uh, when yeah. it was um, a closed state. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then the year, the net, the following year um, when it was a um, democratic state. So, oh, um, okay. So, and the emblem changed on the helmet itself. So, uh, the, I think it's a four. 42nd and 44 and 45, or maybe 43 and 44. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, what, what, do you, what do you remember of those two sort of victories then? Were they great days for yourself then? Well, yeah. I, I mean, um, uh, 18 I was a particularly good year. Uh, you know, third, third, in, third in the world, uh, win the Czech Golden Helmet. Um, I think I think we wiped the floor. Red Reading. Um, remind me what we did that year. Red. Um, I don't. Know. I haven't got. I haven't got a lot of individual stats here. But I, I, you did, uh, Reading. Reading. You managed to win the league in 1990 and 92. So 89. I don't think you quite quite won no, it. No, no. But uh, we, 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 but we would have won something. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you might have done, but I, I haven't got it here. So, but uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, the Czech Golden Helmet. You know, that's it's a prestigious event nowadays. Yeah, it is, you know, and, and it's good to see those, you, you go to those big internationals and, well, on the long tracks and the grass tracks as well, and, and th- although they don't run many meetings, every year they, they try and um, uh, make it better, you know, yeah. and uh, and I was invited a couple of years ago, actually, and went back there with uh, some well-known other um, former riders, and mm. um, other JD, John Davis, he was oh, yeah. there. Just had his hip done and his other hip, I think, and sat in the car and we had to help him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think they had to stand <laughs> for the rest of the day. <laughs> Prop him um, up against the wall, sort of thing, he'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, and that's unfortunately that's the telling times of the of the, 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 the past mm. past career, the injuries and what what comes about. Yeah. Um, then Dennis Cigars were there and Hans, Hans Nielsen. Um, Eric, unfortunately, Gunderson couldn't, couldn't make it because he was, yeah. um, he was, uh, uh, got a cold actually, wasn't very well. Oh, okay, right. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ollie Olsen was, was there. Um, mm-hmm. And they, they looked after us um, like royalty, to be honest. It was, um, uh, and, and um, yeah, they really did, and 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 they've always said to us, if you if you're ever a winner of the golden helmet, that's a, your invitation to go there, you know, uh, as a as a return, with, and you're welcome. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just 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 take your golden helmet with you. And say, look, this is my one. This is what I won. You know, this is let me in. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. The only problem is is on the parade when. If it drags on a long while, it, there's, there's, you know, you, you, you can't wait that long to go to the toilet nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because don't, don't, don't you walk right away around the whole track at that one? Yeah, you do. It's a long parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I've been, I've been to one of them. I went to the one where Nicky crashed and broke his neck. Um, yeah. When Emmett won it, well, that was the first time, time, the only time I've ever been to that meeting, and that meeting blew my mind away completely. First of all, the scoring and knowing who's in the race was a was an eye opener to start with, because <laughs> the program's not filled in. You got to fill it in as you go along, yeah. you know. So you don't really watch the first few races because you're trying to find out who's in the groups. But it, I mean, for yourself, was that a, a surprise then to win those two then, especially back to back? Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's nice. I wouldn't say it's. It, 
so much surprise. It was re really hard work, you yeah. know, to get to the final. And um, I say, there's a if you think you're there, well, actually we uh, flew in both both days. So how we used to get there in the old, um, you know, the Eastern Bloc days was like we, well, very early on we used to um, <clears throat> travel. If we all ride on a Saturday night, we used to travel from from where we were riding and go go to Stansted Airport, which then was um, wasn't even built. That's just a hut. This is <laughs> really, really early on. And yeah. we'd, we'd get on these like Cessna type things, which you know, and then, and then away we go. And then we go from there to um, I think it was um, I think it's uh, Amsterdam, I think. Or Belgium okay. or something, somewhere like yeah. a little, a little, little airport, and then, um, and then get some sleep on the conveyor belt or wh wh wherever <laughs> we can get an hour's, an hours, a couple of hours sleep until they, until all the uh, staff come and open up the terminals. Then, he, then we end up in Amsterdam from Amsterdam to Frankfurt, mm. and then from Frankfurt to Prague. But the Frankfurt to Prague, you, um. Oh, sorry, then to Prague, and then Prague to Pardubitz. The part of part of to Prague is the one where uh, you, you met with these the Czech limos and the police escort um, yeah. back and back and front, and then we all pile in these. Um, we're pro about, probably about four four of these limos, and then just they just try and the limo drivers try and beat each other's times from the previous year. <laughs> And that, that is the scariest thing. If you're feeling a bit jaded and, uh, you know, a little, little bit um, a bit sleepy, you certainly weren't after sort of like going through the streets of Prague, Prague over the cobble streets sideways, and even the cops are sideways as well. They love it as well because they're, they're trying to beat each other's times. And, and you get when you get to part of it, so the track, there's all smoke and the, the, the smell, the smell rubber burning. That sort of like it, it is sort of like. A, and those and I miss those times because they were the you you never you never ever ever experience that sort of thing again. But mm. um, and the transformation from so to get on there and then you have got to actually race. <laughs> yes, yeah. actually do your job then, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. You've been up all night and sort of like you know trying to catch half an hour here and there, and then sort of mm. like a terrifying trip to a track, and then you sort of like right now you do your bit, you know, you sort of yeah. jittery and you don't know where you are, you know, you sort of like, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. You go sort of like an autopilot type of thing when you get on the bike, sort of thing. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it sounds like the riding was the easy part, really. <laughs> it is really. I mean, I've had sort of numerous trips there, but when it was a closed, and uh, Dave Robinson there, he, he used to go with John Smith All Stars and take mm. the bike over. And um, the old Yeti, he managed to set fire to my bike one year before I even got there. And I got there <laughs> oh, and I thought, God. Have you ever done here? And he said, Well, we, you know, it backfired. He's trying to get it through the scrutineer. And I said, Well, I know it won't start because I've got the spark boxes here because I've got some special ones made up. <laughs> So he, he, did, he, sits and go, he, he always reminds me about it. He said, oh, Don, remember when I set fire to your bike in Checker? You weren't very happy, were you? I said, no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably was your best bike, not your second bike or anything like that. So. <laughs> it, was good, it was, yeah. And, then, and when I did start it up, it all poured, poured out all the oil out over the overflow. And I said, well, what's going to Well, the bike was too late, so we filled it up with oil. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so I had a bike which was on fire, and then covered in oil, and sort of then covered on me as well. So yeah, so that one went quite well because um, the you know the, I, I was under strict instructions that Dave don't touch my bike. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you learn from that one, put it that way. Yeah, but no, um, yeah. yeah, but still, I mean, to have those two golden helmets, you know, um, amazing stuff. You know, um, are you the only Englishman to win it twice or back to back? Uh, yeah, I am actually. Yeah, yeah, J yeah. JD won it. Um, I, yeah, I think I'm the only Englishman, eh? and and well, I'll be the only one to win it back to back, as yeah. in uh, a, a communist country, and then a democratic country. Yeah, so a bit of history there for yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, yes, that's the change, the change of history. Well, I'll be the only person to do Oh, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it goes back again, it may go back again. You never know. Right? Oh, you, you never know in this world. But... <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah, but... Um... Uh, and the actual fact that the, the, the following year when I've uh, won it again, I took the same bike and it started to vibrate right uh, before the semi-final and, and I actually won it on Chris, um, Chris Louis' bike. Mm. Oh, okay. Chris had, Chris had gone, um, been eliminated, and and uh, I said, "Christ, my mine's vibrating. I can hardly hang on the handlebars. It's vibrating so bad." Mm. And in um, in actual fact, when we got home and looked at it, the engine, you know, that three of the engine bolts are snapped and the footrest. Oh pulled. no! <laughs> yeah, so lucky it didn't fall out. Yeah. Um, and I hopped. He, he said, "Well, whatever you do, don't." You know, you know, don't do the clutch gets hot, so don't do any practice starts on it. So I did about four practice starts. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, obviously won won the seven semi final, won the final, mm. and, and he's funny enough. He mentioned it the other day because he sort of said, "I couldn't believe it." He said, "You did all those starts, and then you went and done a six lap race, and I went and felt the clutch afterwards, and it's stone cold." He said, how do you do that? <laughs> ah, you see, he's a specialist technique there, you see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, so great to hear those sort of stories. Because, again, like I always say, if you didn't do these sort of things, we wouldn't hear those sort of stories. So that's great to hear, Don, I mean. Yeah, but um, yeah. uh, turning back to just finish off this interview with talking about your, your British career again, um, you stayed with Reading till, uh, was it 93 you stayed with them till, before moving back to Ipswich in 94? Yeah. Um, um, and at that time, obviously, you managed to win uh, the League Cup double in 1990 with um, Reading. I mean, that must have been a, a good year. Obviously, Per winning the World Championship, you guys cleaning the ball in the British League. I mean, it must have been a special year again. Yeah, like I say, that if you if you look at that team, that Reading team, I, I, I say it's it's like it's got class written all over it, you know, mm. and, and uh, you know we we just took took other teams apart wherever we went and we just built up so much momentum and yeah um, and we just dragged people up to you know to to be a uh, every rider was a heat lead heat leader to be honest mm. you know it is a uh, phenomenal it phenomenal it is re- really um and and to try and replicate that again it, you know it happens once sometimes you know once in a lifetime really and, yeah and it happened to to us sort of twice at Reading and sort of in quite, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in quite close proximity to each other, yeah. Because uh, ninety two right. again was the year you won the league again. So, yeah. and um, yeah. I imagine you managed to keep yeah. most of the same team for that year as well. Yeah, it's in, incredible. And uh, I say, like I said early on in, in the interview, that um, uh, you know you you're only you're only as good a leader as as uh, from the top, and um, mm. I say with Pat, Chris, and Bill, or you know, uh, and Tim, you know, yep. that that's the you know that's the starting point. Mm. And of course, then the return to to Ipswich in in ninety four, you know, and it must have been sad, obviously, to leave Reading, but nice to come sort of sort of home again to to reestablish yourself there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I. I suppose at a funny stage in my career, getting a bit old and a bit fossilised, and you know, and um, <laughs> uh, you know, they, Ipswich said to me, "So well, look, you know, do you fancy, um, you know, finishing your career at Ipswich, you know, and um, mm. which, which, yeah, it, it was at the time when um, the BSBA were having a few issues, and um, you know, with uh, uh, averages and you know, and and uh, a few other little um, pay scale structures and bits and mm. pieces, and so yeah. it did, didn't really. It, 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 it the nearer you can ride on your doorstep, the more financial viable it was. Uh, so, um, which which I don't know, you know which 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 worked, worked out quite well, and I mean that uh, had had a lovely time, lovely time. 
Um, yeah, because also in in that sort of that little period in um, ninety five and ninety six, the leagues all went to one league. Um, how did you sort of? Things, yeah. So how, how did you find when those those two years when they went to um, all one big league when the second division clubs came in and things like that? Did you enjoy that sort of time? Well, I did. Yeah, that was six man sides, wasn't it? Six man teams. Uh, not in not in ninety five and ninety six. It was still seven. I think it was ninety seven and ninety eight. Was the six man teams? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It all blurs into one, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, it's when Ipswich done the treble with Gollum and um, Ricardson and Chris and everyone was ninety eight. That's when they had six man team and nominated races and, and all that sort of thing. So, but um, right, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, going back to 95, 96, um, when the two leagues came wide and say the second division clubs came in, was that um, enjoyable for yourself or was that just made your oh, schedule even more busy? Well, no, it gave a few more tracks to go to. Um, you know, it, um, I, felt, I think it's quite successful, really. As far as, uh, but I think what was lacking was that they they needed like, um, uh, like something like the Midland Development League or, mm. you know, um, because there wasn't any 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 anywhere for the kids to go, yeah. You, you know, you need that natural, you need that those um, uh, development leagues, which are um, so important, which are um, which they they do actually realise now, and they are trying yeah. uh, very hard to sort of keep keep that side of things afloat. You know, mm. to keep feeding. You've always so if if you've got leagues, you've got you've got to keep feeding. It. You've got need to feed it with new talent and riders. And 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 by joining the two leagues together, there wasn't that um, there was a gap. Yeah. And so, and that's probably why they had to revert back to two leagues because they mm. could see that you know it wasn't um, wasn't viable. Yeah. But. Because yeah. I, I, my, my, one of my other episodes, I speak to David Mason, who was actually one of the victims of that kind of thing. And when the Premier League came in in 97, him, Lee Richardson, people like that, who were struggling in the top league, when it was all one league, went down into the, the Premier League. And they said they absolutely loved it because it was a league sort of made up for them almost because uh, they, a lot of those boys were struggling. So, yeah, I can kind of echo what you say, what you're saying with that, because obviously I think that time it was only like the Conference League and then you went Conference League straight into the, the British League and that was yeah. one one jump too many sort of thing for most kids. Yes, that was. I know Lee, Lee Richardson, that, that put him back a couple of years when he, mm. you know, he, 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 he made that jump and that, that was a, a big step for him and um, that probably really knocked his confidence, but um, he did did come through it obviously yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it came through the came through the ranks at reading and things like that he did as well so you know he did, all good yeah. there yeah, yeah. Go on, another another reading asset yeah 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 another, another yeah. reading local local well fairly local yeah fairly local <laughs> yeah exactly of course he stayed with um ipswich till to 97 you know, and then um, from the notes I've been researching on yourself, so correct me if I am wrong, uh, you kind of stepped out of the British League sort of thing for a couple of years and came back in 2000 with Ipswich. Um, was that uh, for, you, for yourself, just to concentrate on grass track, or was it just a case of, you know, you just didn't fancy doing speedway? Um, yeah, I know. Like I say, I think that is at the, going through a, a bit of a change in life and trying to... Um, start a different career career path yeah. as well so uh and thought well i'll concentrate on the, the grass tracks and the long tracks and, the, and the, at the time it seemed seemed to be ample mm. um and i kind of always knew the averages didn't fit as well so that's another reason uh, and, and and i got, kind of knew that um you know someone would probably give us a call yeah, and I couldn't actually, uh, 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 and also I still couldn't move down at prem, um, into the Premier League or the National League. Oh, okay. Mm. And there's still that, there's still that block. I never could. Mm. They were, they, they, uh, the BS place said no. He said you're, no, you can't. You're because of this old hands list. You're still on that list. <laughs> then, then, no. You, <laughs> No, which is, which is a bit unfortunate, really, because it probably would have just benefited you, you know, just going down a league and just enjoying your speedway more than anything. I, I, th I think I would do, but then, um, so when I went back to Chichis in 2000, was it 2000? Yeah, I've got down to 2000, yeah. Yeah, yeah Chris 
phoned us up and said, look, you know, you know, um, I, I said, well, I'll do your job at reserve. Mm. And um, <clears throat> and uh, I think the first meeting was back at Coventry. And I've, I've got a few points. I can't remember I've got. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and then, then I sort of, um, I was actually riding uh, one of John's short stroke GMs and we're experimenting with them and, um, and, it, and uh, we found something. And uh, that's quite good, really, really, because Kelvin was um, taking them out of short stroke GMs and he, he was saying how, how he didn't like them. And they, mm. they didn't get with them. The long strokes are much better. And I, and I thought, bloody hell, when I scored like 19 plus 21, I was, <laughs> yeah. Mine's all right. I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you've got yours dialed in. Favor, really. Yeah. So I rode, rode them for a couple of, couple of years. I had a couple of really good years on them short strokes, and everyone really, you know, um, the penny dropped and everyone changed over. Yeah, yeah. Much, much, much easier to ride, and uh, you know, they're really good. Yeah, so obviously you, you paved the way then. You know, everyone saw, oh, Donk's doing really well. Let's try what he's trying. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, you say this uh, last stint, which you lasted till 2002, I've got it down to. So that must have been, uh, again, a nice couple of years of just enjoying your speedway. Yeah, I did. I um, always enjoyed my um, speedway. It's, it's a diff- you know, different, different times. Different. I mean, there's times when... Um, you know, with um, Mike Smiley and different team managers, and mm. people really going to do it this year. We tried to replicate what we were, um, what we achieved at Reading to try and get that that, that team spirit going because the management was very similar. You know, they're very keen, yeah. uh, led led from the top, and and um, we felt well, yeah, we're going to do it. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> and, then, and then we're in. I turned around one day and said, Mike, Mike, don't say it, don't say it, because we're looking really good. And within mm. a split second, we lost Scotty. And, and oh, yeah. And within, <laughs> within one crash, and we went, oh, no, you know, that, here we go again. <laughs> and, and that's how, that's how Speedway is. The tables can turn just so so quick, where you're on top of your game one minute, and then and then um, you're out with an injury, you know, with no – and that can be the most innocent little thing, you know. Mm. Even, yeah, even Scoey had a rabbit run out of him on the track once. He loaded it, <laughs> <laughs> and the rabbit was bigger than him, probably, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I mean, say so looking at um, at the career you had in Speedway, I mean, you know, it's it's amazing to to see the achievements you did get. I mean, we've not even had we've not even touched on the the long track the world long track finals no, or anything no, like that you know but uh i think we might have to save that one for a part two you know because uh, so, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know because yeah. i'm yeah. sure there's a few more stories in the old tank yet that you could still tell us <laughs> so but um uh but seriously jeremy thank you for your time tonight mate we, we must really wrap this up um, you know it's um yeah. but uh that's like i say it's it's fantastic you know to to yeah. hear hear all your stories and everything you know i loved it <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed Brilliant. it as well so, I do, yeah, yeah. It's nice, nice to talk. Good to talk, as they say. Yeah, it's good to talk. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but before I, before I go, I think I must remind everyone. You know, like the like the page on Facebook, join the group uh, on Facebook, like uh, follow follow us on Spotify, on YouTube. Um, this will be out soon, very soon. So hopefully, all you Ipswich fans and Reading fans will love to hear this guy's stories, and I'm sure we'll get him on for a part two and. It'll be even more stories to tell us. So, mm-hmm. but um, cheers for you, cheers for your, um, your input tonight, Donk. You know, much appreciated, mate. All right then. No worries. Where's my thumb? There it is. There, there it is. Go. Yeah. There. <laughs> All yeah. right. Cheers, Donk. Put me straight one. Look, that's, 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 <laughs> me, that's the one which survived. Yeah, that's, that's the good one. Yeah, that's the speedway one. <laughs> 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 All right then, mate. Well, we'll just sign off on this then. All right. Cheers, Donk. Cheers.